Yes, that is our new bathroom sink in the dining room. The remodel is still going on. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are going to answer the four most frequently asked questions. The most asked question, the number one asked question will be the last one. Stick around till the end if you want to hear that one. But let's get started. So we're going to start off with water bath canning first. Um, this question has come up a lot lately. I'm not entirely sure why, but it has. So the question is, <laughs> um, can you double stack when you're water bath canning? So as most of you know, in a pressure canner, there's a rack that you can buy because you've always got one on the bottom, but you can always order a second one and you can double stack in a pressure canner if you're doing pints or smaller. And this allows you to do more. It's great. Uh, with water bath canning, the very simple answer is yes, you can, but there's a caveat. You have to ensure that there is at least one inch of water over the top of the top jar. So it would have to be a pretty deep pot if you're doing pints. Um, it would have to be pretty full of water for anything else. And that's not always safe because you don't only need that one inch of water over the top, it needs to be boiling water. So you need even more space above that so that it doesn't, you know, boil over. Okay. Um, it's, it's up to you. To me, it's kind of an unnecessary step. Water bath canning is 10, 15, 20 minutes tops for some stuff. But for the most part, it's not a really long time. And if you're having to fill your very, very deep pot that full to get an inch over that top jar, how are you going to get the ones on the bottom with that hot water, you know, without scalding your fingers? Um, there are times when I can't, I can't get to the bottom sometimes with the smaller jars because there's so much water in there. So, uh, yes, you can. Do you really want to? Okay. Number two is what is my altitude? How do I find out what my altitude is? This is super simple, everyone. Super, super simple. Okay. Google is your friend. Google is your friend. I'm going to get a t-shirt that says that Google is your friend. Okay. All you have to do is type into Google and that's what I did. I typed into Google and I said, what is my altitude for my city in Michigan? Poof, 682 feet above sea level. What you want to be very conscious of is that Google likes to interchange elevation and altitude. And they are two completely different things and the numbers can vary drastically depending on where you're at. So you want to make sure that you're getting your altitude, not your elevation. Okay. So I went on and, and I tried to do Jacksonville, North Carolina, and it just gave me North Carolina, North Carolina. The altitude in North Carolina is 700 feet above sea level. The altitude in Florida is 340 feet, 345 feet above sea level. The altitude in Washington, D.C. is 410 feet above sea level. So I was like, okay, now I got to find, I got to find someplace that's a little higher. You know, we got to get a little higher here. There are people that, that live in higher altitudes than that. So let's pick Utah. Okay, so Utah, I found out, um, has varying degrees of altitude. This is one of those tricky states. So the city or town with the lowest altitude in the state of Utah is Beaver Dam Wash. Is that just not the coolest name for a city? Anyway, Beaver Dam Wash, Utah has the lowest elevation of the entire state and that is 2,000 feet above sea level. So there are other places that are almost 5,000 feet above sea level in Utah. So you want to really kind of narrow that down as much as you can. Um, you get in, play with Google, try to try to get as close to your area as you can, um, see what it brings up, but always pay attention to the fact that you want altitude and not elevation. And if it substitutes elevation, just kind of dig down a little bit on the page and it should be able to show you what you're looking for. So that is how you find what your altitude is. Google. Okay. So number three, number three, why do you vent your canner? This one's really, really simple. Um, when you vent your canner, what you're doing is you're forcing the air out of the canner. It is heating up the water. 
and it's creating steam and it's pushing excess air out of the canner. If you don't get all of that air out of the canner, then you can risk under processing your foods. The National Center for Home Food Preservation recommends 10 minutes of venting to ensure that you have pushed all of the excess air out of your canner and that way you don't under process. If you're not doing that, you're very much risking under processing your food, not killing off all of the bacteria and the germs that you need to, and it could make you sick. So let it vent for 10 minutes, okay? The final and number one most asked question the most asked question, and I've never answered it, not once. I always say, look at your manual, read your manual. And I still say, please read your manual. And if I have encouraged you in any way to purchase used canners from Marketplace or Craigslist or wherever, um, and it didn't come with a manual, a dime to a dollar says, if you search on Google, you will find a downloadable version of the manual for your canner. It's really super simple. But there's a rule of thumb. <laughs> There's a rule of thumb for how much water you should put in your canner. Now, there is not um, any harm that you can do really by putting too much water in your canner. And I'm not saying over the top of the jars. If you're pressure canning, you don't need it over the top of your jars. Um, but there's not really gonna be any harm if you add too much per se. Um, but if you add too little, then you can really, really run the risk of major damage to your canner, your jars, and your food. And nobody wants to waste food, it's expensive. So you wanna make sure that you have no less than three inches of water in your canner, unless your manual tells you differently, okay? But the average rule is three inches. I always tend to go mm, a smidge above three inches, just in case. Um, you don't wanna go over the top of your jars, you really don't. But when you put three inches of water into your canner, and you add jars to it, it will automatically come up. I mean, that's just the way water works, you guys, you know? So it'll automatically come up, but it shouldn't go over the top of your jars if you're pressure canning. So three inches of water is the standard rule for how much water to put in your pressure canner. I've been asked that question hundreds of times, hundreds of times. So now we have the answer, three inches. <laughs> I hope these questions and answers were helpful to you. Um, new canners often have questions and there's no such thing as a dumb question when you're canning, um, especially when you're just learning how to do it because it can be scary and I get that. But trust me, you're probably in more danger driving your car than you are in pressure canning. They are made nowadays so that they don't blow up. Okay, so just follow the rules, read your manual, do the things the way people have it laid out. Put at least three inches of water in your canner and you're gonna be safe and everything's gonna be wonderful and you will never look back. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Don't forget about Twitter. And until the next time, be safe.